The Johan 1969 AMC SC Rambler coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello model car fans and welcome back to another great unboxing video. You may be wondering why I put up the American flag in the background here. Well that's because this is a Rambler American. In fact it is a special one. It is 1969 SC Rambler by Johan. In the real car they uh, nicknamed it the Scrambler because of the SC part. SC stood for supercar. And in fact, this one has the red, white, and blue American graphics behind it. And that's why I put up the flag. So uh, the cool part is it's got this hood scoop and everything else, which was not standard on your regular Rambler. So I'm going to open up this lid and we're going to check it out. But before we do, I thought I'd try a new feature on here. And that is showing everybody what the other box arts and things of these kits are. So that if you're out there in internet land and you stumble across one of the other variants on this that you know it's pretty much the same kit inside. So let's check that out and then we'll take a look at what's in the box. And now we hearken all the way back to 1969 for American Motors as we reveal the Superstock SC Rambler. And I must make a little apology. In my introduction, I introduced this car as a Rambler American. But by 1969, American Motors had decided to drop the American part and just called it a Rambler. But of course, the SC stood for supercar. And a lot of people called this just simply the Scrambler. And scramble it did, because this car was hot back in the day. This is basically American Motors version of the Ford Thunderbolt. Maybe not quite as crazy, but still a very potent car. This one, of course, had the 390 cubic inch motor, and it had this nice blue arrow being basically sucked into this air scoop. And this they call sort of like the shirt box or uh, uh, that kind of thing as an air cleaner. This was fiberglass and it had a little snorkel. It sat up 10 degrees. And it's interesting here, it says air, and you would think, well, okay, it's an air scoop. Why would they put air on here? But I found out through research, that this, this actually meant American International Racing. So that's kind of cool. And it this car had the American red, white, and blue packaging on it. And I actually found out this is the A body style. There is a B body paint job that didn't have all this craziness on it. It actually had red and white, or sorry, red and blue stripes down along the bottom. So you could make this two different ways if your decal sheet is old and wrecked in this kit, or you never had one, you could do the B version. There was 1,512 of these cars built in the real world, and it was pretty hot. So if we take a look at the side of the box, it says, can your hot car come out to play? So that's pretty bold from AMC. The end of the box looks very much like the front of the box. And then here we have the other great kits that were available at the time, and I sure wish it would come back somehow. The police pursuit car, this one was amazing. Had so many options. The biggest deck all sheet for police cruisers ever. And then 31 Cadillacs, Mercedes, a lot of Cadillacs for 31. Um, the Heavenly Hearse, another great one that everybody desires. I did do a review of this. I have one. And I don't know whether to do it a normal hearse or the Heavenly Hearse or try to get another Heavenly Hearse. The Rescue Fire Ambulance. This thing is cool. I have a different ambulance painted in white. The Turbine Car, which you've also seen on this channel. There's a Hauling Hearse Drag Car, which is based off the Heavenly Hearse, but it's all big drag machine. 64 Plymouth Racer, 64 Dodge Drag Racer, Roaring Rambulance Drag, and a Superbird Racer. All cool stuff. I wish I wish Johan and those guys would get it back together. Now, Kit GC2500. That one 
is from 1974. Oh, pardon me. It's from 1969. This kit box went a long ways, all the way to 1992 when this thing got reboxed again. So let's just open the lid and see what's inside. Now this is one of the model kits that I've had for a long time. I've actually built two of these in the past. It's a great kit. And this one I wanted to make is the Absolute SC Rambler. So I've uh, done quite a bit of things on the instruction sheet. This one I won as a door prize at an AMB show, March 13th, 1994. Uh, from fine scale models and then i've got here see the may issue of performance muscle cars page 82 i don't know what year that was anyway inside i have the original decal sheet and it's actually stood the test of time this thing has no cracks in it it's pretty nice and one thing i noticed is seville enterprises had this and uh on one of mine the side decals were actually longer than the car so just as a warning, this may not have the right registry for um, the body. Anyway, we've got our chrome detail in here. And this one, I'm very lucky because the chrome is in good shape. Later AMCs had wrinkles in the chrome. So um, I don't know what to do about it. It's a shellac. If you strip the chrome off, they use shellac with uh, some metal filings in it. There, of course, is our glass. And... Um, the shellac on it wouldn't come off the plastic so i've got permanent wrinkle in that bumper um now i've i've taken off the hood of course and stuck it in here sorry guys i'm talking quite a bit there's our rambler body and then we've got our interior tub and this is actually the trunk there is a lot of flash on these especially johan just kept running the mold non-stop basically for decades there's more of the seats and everything there's our underneath i mean look at the flash on there like <laughs> that's a muffler <laughs> okay there's our engine and what's cool about this is they have separate cylinder heads with all the actual tops of the cylinders and everything in there a lot of white pieces steering wheel and everything rear springs this is multi-piece rear axle millions of miles of flash on it big axle goes right through your engine block but still very nice detail tires special johan tires they are nondescript and i think i've added a few bits and pieces in here because i i don't know if that's a proper air cleaner plastic axles and then trunk lid and then all kinds of good bits now i put paper towel in here oh so as we look at the body i'm going to describe some stuff there's our rear tail lamps and the dashboard and all the rest so i'm going to clear up all my mess here and then we're going to look right in those instructions now here's our instruction sheet and Unfortunately, like I said, I got a little confused and I called this thing a Rambler American. Now the whole reason for that is this actually started off in 1964 as the Rambler American hardtop. And it was an annual kit and it had the opening trunk and all the rest. Then it got upgraded to a 65 Rambler American. Then it got upgraded again to a 66 Rambler American. And there's some components in this actual kit that are still incorrect for 69 SC Rambler. I'll get to that in a minute. Basically, this car is still the 66 American, except that they added in the scoop and a bunch of the SC Rambler parts, but they never corrected one feature. If you know what that feature is, let me know in the comments below. I'll give you the answer, but uh, I want to see if you know it. Okay, so anyway... And then this kit ran from 69 to 1992. And in 92, the box changed. And then in 1998, it became a tester's model kit, which I think is still on the market. It's a Rambler Pro Street. Um, it's not like on the market, on the market, but it's still out there to find. 
So I already read those side things. So Johan, to me, is sort of like the American Motors of plastic models. We'll just roll this back a little. The instructions fold out nice. It's one page. Very long page. Doesn't even fit in the frame. <laughs> and it's front and back. So I'll just zoom in a back again. Let me just do a little correction zoom. Okay, there's our engine block. And this is the great big American Motors 390 cubic inch motor. And as you can see, I've added in some blue ink in here. This is, of course, for me looking at many, many SC Ramblers. Now remember I made three of these, so this is going to be the ultimate SC Rambler of all SC Ramblerness. <laughs> However you want to say that. So what I've noticed is the air cleaner has a rubber O-ring that goes up there for the ram air hood. That is missing from this model. There should be a little tube that goes into the oil filler cap here. Or oil filler tube, pardon me, into the air cleaner, which was sort of like a uh, emissions breathing kind of thing. There's a vacuum tube to the brake vacuum coming off the carburetor. Interesting. A tube from air cleaner to the breather, rubber O-ring for ram air, so it connects underneath the hood. A fill, o fill the holes in your oil pan so that you don't have the axle going through. So you get your valve covers, your cylinder head, exhaust manifold, left and right engine, the engine transmission bits, are it's all molded together, oil pan, Front engine cover with the water pump glues on the top. And oil filter coming off there. Lower radiator hose. Fan belt assembly. Alternator fan. A starter motor going to the right side of the engine. You get a coil. You also get a water pump hose and the upper radiator hose. And this actually is all like knobby like the real deal. Then we'll just slide this down. Let's get the top up here. Okay, I've made some more notations. This is a chassis. It comes as a pan, except it's open underneath. There were some frame rails under here, it looks like. like oh, rear axle torque links, subframe connectors, and heavy-duty front sway bar should all be added in. There's these little sort of drag things that are put on here, which you got to go find. You've got disc brakes going in, trying to figure out how to not have his axle go through the engine block. Red line tires, the mag wheels, these were basically like your, um, oh, what are they, the 500s, uh, but they were painted blue inside. And then the rear leaf springs, the shocks have the bracket on top of the springs, got to glue it all on separately, then you got your exhaust pipes and the little chrome tips coming off the back. So I'm going to turn this over now. Okay, I did a little pencil crayon stuff back in the day because we want to get this accurate. So the interior actually for 69 had this which glues on top of the um, instrument cluster to upgrade it from the 66 American because it still has the needles and stuff on the dashboard, whereas this is a flat panel, you drill holes in it, and you put your oil pressure gauge, your heater, and your battery stuff, and then the speedometer right dead center. Wood grain on the steering wheel. This has a tachometer, which actually is hooked on, believe it or not, on the real car, with a big hose clamp. <laughs> the headrests with the red, white, and blue, those are special. The entire interior is a charcoal gray, and then you've got wood grain on your steering wheel and your gear shift lever. And then over here, okay, this is where we're going to get into the actual 69 Rambler. So these long tail lights here are from the 66, 66, 67, 68 American. Uh, on the trunk, you drill a tiny little hole in there, one sixteenth inch drill. Don't go all the way through, but that is, of course, for your trunk lid, the lock. Using little tiny pin heads into your rear bumper just to bring that up, like where it would be bolted onto those horns underneath. Trunk compartment. Now, here I've got redesign the taillight valence panel, as in 
Skill Auto Enthusiast number 89, page 54 to 57. Unfortunately, that magazine went underneath in the High River Flood, but this is what the rear end is supposed to look like. These tail lamps don't go all the way across. They're little squares about, you know, from the red to the edge here. And they, they curve inward like this sort of thing. And they're wider, concave. And that was the 67 taillights in the back, redesigned. Now here is the final assembly. And again, I've added in notes. And I actually found some special parts that I didn't show here. Hang on a minute. Okay. And they're from a Mustang. I'll show them in the parts when we look at the parts. Anyway, on the top of the shock absorber towers, there is a piece of metal that goes like this. U-shape. It's not in the kit, but you can fabricate one or use parts from Mustang. There's our hood, and I got a little thing, you know, drill it out so it looks more hingy than just a flat slabby thing. There's our hood scoop, top and bottom. 390 emblem and marker lights from 1969 AMX using Scale Out Enthusiast 89. So what this was was, I think you rub it, get a piece of tin foil, and you rub it on the emblems you want to copy, and then you fill it up with uh, uh, liquid glue that or liquid plastic that you melted down using um, a technique. Yeah, and then you pour it into the aluminum. You let the whole thing dry up. It's plastic and glue liquid glue. And then when the liquid glue comes out of it, it makes a plastic version of the emblem, and then you glue the emblem onto the body. That was what was in that thing. There's the racing mirrors, which I found out were actually extras from Oldsmobile for its Rally 350, or something to that effect. And AMC used the same type of window. Oh, sorry, rear view mirror. So there's our glass going in, and of course it's again connected by the bridge, because this was made in the 60s. Interior bucket. Assembled chassis, you get a separate gas tank. A brake master cylinders, radiators, splash pans, bumpers, the whole thing. The grill you paint out black, but around on the hood and the edges of the fenders, it's chrome in there. All nice and good. So that's how you update the 66 Rambler American into the 69... SC Rambler if you want to be 100% accurate. And here we have our 1969 Superstock SC Rambler body from, of course, our friends at Johan, who are no longer around, sadly. Now, I have cleaned this up just a bit, but you can see there is still a lot of nice detail going on in here. You can get your door handles and all the body looks right basically. <laughs> there are some sink marks underneath this hood, but that won't affect your glass or anything, so luckily you don't really have to try to scrape them out. You might want to fill them in. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, you got your trunk. There's little divots in here for the pins on the trunk. And then underneath here looks correct. Now, American Motors, they painted all this the the same color as the car, so all this in here would be white. Look at that battery pan, that's pretty nice. It's like an actual battery pan with the lip and everything. Um, now I'm not sure though if the battery was in the trunk. I have to look that up. There's the top of the shock absorbers. Basically like the Ford F-style suspension. You also get a little grill in there and your windshield wipers. So. I'm just going to take this body back down here for a minute. There's our hood. Now our hood's got the hole in it. You glue the scoop over top, covers it. And you got your hood pins there, which are prototypical for... Hang on. For the SC Rambler. Underneath, it does have the little um, brace under there. There are some mold marks in here, which are negative, so they're sinking in. You can, of course, try to clean those up or putty them over, but it should be nice when you flatten it all out at the end. And then we do have our trunk lid as well. Like I said, you need to drill a little bit of a hole in there just because there is no uh, little 
place for your key to open up your trunk. There's a big mold button right there, which is really odd. That one does have to come out. And of course you get your trunk bracing underneath as well. And it's hinged on these little pins. Okay, so bringing this back to the body, how does this all fit together? There's one little bit of a flaw with this, but it's not too bad. And that, of course, is that... Now, well, let's see. How can I show this? There is a little bit of a bad gapping issue with the trunk lid. Keep in mind, the vintage of this thing came out in 64 and then just kept getting altered. So use a little bit of evergreen st strip styrene and just glue it along that edge and you'll get a nice tight fit trunk. Remember to put your decal on last because if this thing shifts your decal goes off of position. <laughs> okay so there again this is your 66 American at the back but you need to turn that into a 69. So you could try to cut this out very carefully and then re-sculpt your tail lamps in here. But again, quite tricky to actually turn this into a 69, so if you want to leave the 66 tail lamps, you won't be accurate, but you'll save yourself a headache. <laughs> okay, and then our hood does fit in nicely. Just like that. And like that. There we go. And it does have a good nice tight fit up at the hood end. Somehow though the trunk kind of got the gap. <laughs> it went to the gap. But anyway, it all fits together nice when you're ready for it. Next up we have the chassis pan and I just noticed something. Mine's missing a key element and that's the bridge that goes and connects the two pieces together in the front. I think this was a um, a mold mistake from Johan. I won't, I'll have to figure out how to fix that one up. Anyway, there's mold marks along there and some down here. This was a kind that used a block with holes in it for the front axle to go through. Let's just bring this up. So you glue that in. Um, then underneath you can see some nice crisp detail going on there. Those little things are for your exhaust manifolds to go under. Then your rear axle will fit in here. It's almost like slot car style. <laughs> anyway, look at all the flash on that. That's squashed through that mold. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how these frames work. Once you get the whole car together, everything works properly. And then this area, of course, goes for your trunk, which is... Pardon me, I should have brought this out right here. And you have to get rid of all the flash up there, but this will mat up nicely inside there. And it's so rare that uh, model cars have opening trunks. I wish uh, that would be more of a regular feature, even though they are kind of finicky to work with. It's nice to be able to put tools and tires and all kinds of things in there. Maybe I could put that uh, spare tire thing I found in the 68 Mustang in here to have the tire cover. Again, there's some uh, mold marks sitting up here in the trunk lid that you'll have to scrape out with your number 16 hobby knife. But overall, this thing ends up looking really awesome once you get it all together and done. And I'm just flashing back to the body for a second because I found the components I was looking for. These are top braces from a Mustang. Now they're not quite accurate to the way AMC did it because AMC didn't have the top of the shock absorber things poking up, but this should work basically for what you need with a little alteration, some sandpaper, to put in those cross braces up under the hood. So if you want to make this a little bit more like it should be, look for the Mustang top towers and sacrifice them out of one of the kits. Now here's a whole bunch of our parts trees all together, as well as some of the extra bits and pieces that are not connected to a parts tree anymore. So here we have that front pan, typical of the front of the Rambler. Then the wheel backs, our steering wheel, our incorrect dashboard, the rear axle and springs, rear suspension basically, 
there's a shock absorbers going on there too. Those are the cover plates for the springs for our um, shock absorbers to mount onto. The differential, you can see the flash even from here. But that's typical of, of Johan kits at this time. There's the seats with the headrests. Seat belts are in here as well. There's those little blocks I was talking about that go in the front on the chassis. Then we've got a separate radiator, which is quite good for the vintage, as well as a separate gas tank. There's some cylinder heads. Radiator hose, the bottom of the scoop and the scoop itself as well as another little hose there. There's a stock air cleaner, as it should be, and one of the exhaust pipes. So I'm not going to show everything again, but I will show what counts, I suppose. So let's get these out of the way. Look at that flash, though. Whew. A lot to correct. There's our seats, and the seats are molded as one piece all the way around, which is quite unique, except for, of course, the headrests which you could actually adjust glue in here and adjust up and down for, you know, people that are taller or shorter. A little oil filter right there. <laughs> nice and cute. Okay, there's our cylinder heads. Now, it's interesting because there's cylinder heads here, but I don't know if they're for this Rambler or not, as you'll see in a minute. They do have the pistons, the cylinder heads, actually showing here. If you turn it over, you don't really see those at all. Little pins for mounting onto the block or for your your uh, valve covers. Little bit of mold marks in behind the radiator. The air cleaner's got one there. It'll have to be filed down. You can see this shape here. That's to fit the carburetor in. And of course, lots of flash on this. Which is sort of sad, but hey, Johan. Okay, here's another mistake. I uh, don't know if you can see it, but you can see there, this instrument panel, you have to make your own with the speedometer being a center thing and all drilled out. This had the speedometer went across the numbers in a long path sort of thing. So this is, of course, your dashboard. And then looking at your steering wheel, this is correct for the SC Rambler, the little holes and stuff in it. And it'll just go right down in there. Nice fit. Oops. <laughs> so good it fell off. Anyway, the wheel backs again. You'll have to machine these with some sandpaper to get them right. And our front little pan. Now I did try to drill this out, looks like, because that should be open. Whoops. If you don't feel advantageous trying to drill out all three of these, of course just use black paint. And here's our final components, mostly the engine components, as you can see. So here's the right and left hand side engine block, and it does have this big massive hole in the side. You could plug that up, of course. Now see, there's more cylinder heads. So I do believe these ones go with this engine. I don't know what the other ones were about. Maybe from the 66 American. Might not have had this type of engine. Of course, this is the 390 sitting in here. So you got to be careful in the flash, because there are parts in here. That almost looks like the starter motor. There's a distributor. Our master cylinder here. And, oh, there's the starter there. So that's a coil. This is the oil... Uh, the oil filter, believe it or not. you got to get rid of this big blob of flash around the bottom of it. There's our intake manifold and our front engine cover, as well as the water pump there oil pan and our belts and pulleys which again have to be rescued out of that flash there's the plastic axles battery fan and the other exhaust pipe the one i pulled out of the box and said look at the flash i mean that yeah okay <laughs> but anyway despite all this massive amount of flash let's just get this out of here the detail is very nice on this thing and looks like a proper 390 amc big block so, yeah, what I would suggest is sand off these location pins and just maneuver this thing together until the seam lines basically connect properly. Then I would sand out your flash there. There's your spark plugs along there on the cylinder heads. So, yeah, a lot of nice work. 
lot of work you're going to have to do getting rid of flash. But overall, the Johan kits do come out nice in the end. And last but not least for our interior components, we of course have our interior tub. And again, the sides are very um, shallow for the mold. Nice seat detail on here. There are some mold marks on the floor, which of course you'll have to remove with your number 16 hobby blade. And interestingly enough, the pedal comes out as a big long thing in there. <laughs> the gas pedal. And our brake and clutch are just sort of molded in place. It does have little ashtrays in the armrests. But overall, this does fit in nicely into our AMC body. There's a couple little tabs that go in through the firewall right there just to lock it all in place. Again, nice work, and the glass will fit in there up against that nice and snug. Next up we have my favorite components of all, which of course is the chrome. And, uh, well, for the SC Rambler we have to black out all the chrome, but you do leave this part up here chrome, and I do believe you leave the name chrome, and then our headlights as well. These are the Magnum 500 mag wheels. I remember what they are now. And then we've got our carburetor there and shifter and the nice valve covers, the chrome ones, as well as our alternator. And there's a rear view mirror up there. These ones are the side ones. Tachometer, which gets mounted onto that steering column. But again, very nice detail considering this came out in 1969, or 66 even. I do believe, it almost looks like my chrome rear bumper is bent. You can see there, I've got those little bumper brackets that are supposed to be on there. But they're missing. But again, the chrome on here is pretty good, considering that I'm missing that one piece on the other bit. Which is, uh, what, I'm, what I'm referring to is the chassis didn't mold properly for me, but at least I got that back in the chrome. <laughs> so... Again, nice work by Johan on this particular component. And here's our final components, and I thought I'd show these all together. Here you've got your front and rear window connected, of course, by these rails, which, of course, you can cut these off for more accuracy. Your two little red taillights are very, very thin, so be careful you don't lose them. And then the atypical Johan nondescript tire. But these are nice because you could actually put that in your spinner, sand them down, and then add the red line, red stripe on there for your red wall tires. And as you can see, the tread is just basically straight lines going all the way around the tire. These will clean up, they'll look nice, and they do fit the Johan wheels very well. And these are still squishy considering the vintage, which is nice. And uh, that's basically your components. Last but not least is our decal sheet. And as you can tell, it's very basic. These are in fact silkscreen style decals, which are quite an old process of doing things. Now they're all done, you know, through the computer and look a lot more accurate. However, since these are the only SC Rambler decals in all existence, <laughs> they're not bad. You got your 390 cubic inch on the hood, and then the stripe for the roof and the trunk lid. Actually, you can really see the side of the body here. There's the front and the back with the notch for the bumper. And then we have our American International Racing Air on there. Now, remember I did say at the beginning some of these decal sheets were off register. Some of them I've had, they actually were longer than the car or whatever. I don't know quite what was going on with some of that. However, here's our body again, and as you can see, I'm fortunate that it does actually line up. I know it's hard to see, you got to look from the bottom here. That bottom edge right there matches end to end. So I did get a good set of decals, and mine are not cracked. The only thing they're missing is license plates, which would be more modern, but again, more fine detail. Here we have our built edition of the AMC 1969 SC Rambler by Johan. And what I was going to show you here is 
if you look under the door, it looks like there was oil or something that dripped down here. That is an off-register decal sheet that I had to slice and move the two components in together. This is the overlap of the two. There you can see the Magnum 500 wheels painted in AMC blue. The only thing I messed up on here was the red, white, and blue headrests, which I don't have, because I didn't know that was a thing. I do believe I added the Hearst shifter thing from like an AMT kit or something, just to connect it with the Hearst company. There, of course, is the back. Looks nice and proper, except for the taillights. Then we've got our opening trunk here, which won't get into that, I guess. Uh, oh, you can see bare metal foil on here. It's kind of wrinkly and whatnot. That's a shellac underneath. I could not remove it for the life of me. So anyway, there's our Rambler. We've got the chrome along here on the roof. Very nice look. Yeah, there again you can see the discoloration right here. That again is the decal sheet cut and overlapped. So there you go. Luckily this decal sheet is on register. So that's good. Like even the the decal for the scoop is off. Which you'll see in the photographs coming up. And that completes our review of the 1969 Johan SC Rambler Super Stock. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this unboxing and review of Johan's 1969 AMC SC Rambler model kit. And be sure to look out for some of those other Ramblers that I showed at the beginning of this video. Look for those boxes because they're basically the same kit inside. So next week we'll be taking a look at some more cars from 1969. In fact, we've just started this series in 1969. I have 13 cars to review, including this one. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound that notification bell so that every time I upload a new model car video, you're the first to know about it. And check out our old videos as well. I go all the way back to the 20s. So until next time, model car fans, happy model building. Thank <laughs> you.